Grok 4 is a postgrad level in everything. Like it's it just some of these things are just worth repeating. Like Grok 4 is postgraduate, like PhD level in everything. Better than PhD, but like most PhDs would fail. So it's better that said, I mean, at least with respect to academic questions, it, it I want to just emphasize this point. With respect to academic questions, Grok 4 is better than PhD level in every subject, no exceptions. It's over, guys. Elon Musk just dropped the craziest AI update we've seen yet. His company, XAI, has launched an AI that he claims is smarter than every single PhD expert on the planet. Yeah, you heard that right. The man behind Tesla and SpaceX is now coming straight for OpenAI with a bold claim that could shake the entire AI industry. He is saying that his new AI is better than any human PhD expert, literally in every single domain. So does that mean it's finally over for us? Has artificial intelligence finally definitively overtaken human intelligence? And if not, what's the catch here? Because there's always a catch. Let's get into it. Now, Elon Musk, the CEO of XAI, just released their latest version of the Grok model, and the benchmarks are, to put it mildly, stunning. It's not just beating other models from OpenAI, Google, and Anthropic. The claim is that it's beating us, the best of us. To truly understand this, I want to show you something. Here is the graph from a benchmark they're calling the Humanities Last Exam. Look at the huge gap between Grok and the other industry-leading models. Grok 4 with tools scores 38.6%, but Grok 4 heavy? It scores 44.4%. That is literally double the previous best score on this incredibly difficult test. But honestly, that's not even the scariest graph they showed, because a PhD exam still tests knowledge. What about a test of pure, raw intelligence? There's a benchmark called ArcAGI. Forget memorizing facts, this is designed to test an AI's ability to solve novel problems it has never seen before. It's a measure of abstract reasoning, a key ingredient for true artificial general intelligence. So how did Grok do on that? Look at this. On the left, you have performance versus cost. All the other models, Claude, Gemini, GPT, are all clustered down here. And then you have Grok 4, all by itself, in a class of its own higher score for a ridiculously low cost. But this is the part that should have everyone freaking out. On a harder version of the test, Arc AGI V2, look at the gap. The second best model, Claude Opus 4, scores 8.6%. Grok 4 scores 15.9%. It's not just a little better. It has nearly doubled the score of its nearest competitor on a test of pure reasoning. So we now have an AI that is acing our PhD exams and is demonstrating vastly superior abstract reasoning. This has to be it, right? This is the definition of intelligence. But here's the thing. Answering PhD level questions, as impressive as it is, obviously isn't the end of human intelligence. And we all know this deep down. It's a powerful demonstration of knowledge retrieval and reasoning. But it's not the whole story. Because there's a vast difference between a machine that can provide the correct answer and a mind that can ask the right question. All of these benchmarks, from HLE to ARC AGI, test for pattern recognition and reasoning on existing knowledge. They do not and cannot test for curiosity, intent, or the spark of original creation. Grok is an incredible demonstration of what's possible with existing data, but it's still playing in our sandbox. It's not inventing a new game. So you might be asking, hey, haven't you made a video about this before? About experts predicting we'll have AGI by the end of 2027 and super intelligence by 2030? Of course I did. And the reality is I'm not the only one who's taking that timeline seriously. Elon Musk himself is one of its biggest proponents. And this is where it gets really serious. He believes that maybe the next version of Grok, and almost certainly Grok 6, will stop being a tool that just answers our questions and will start inventing new ideas. You know, I think about like where we are today. We're we're at the beginning of an immense intelligence explosion. We're in we're in the ex intelligence big bang right now, um, and the mo we're at the most interesting time to be alive of any time in history. Yeah. Now that said, we need to make sure that the AI is um, a good AI, <laughs> uh, good Grok. Um, um, now, this doesn't mean that it's, it, it, you know, at times it may lack common sense, and it has not yet invented new technologies or discovered new physics, but that is just a matter of time. Mm 
um, if it, I, I think it may discover new technologies uh, as soon as later this year. Um, and I, I would be shocked if it is not done so next year. So I would expect Grok to, yeah, literally discover new, new technologies that are actually useful no later than next year and maybe end of this year. Um, and it might discover new physics next year. And within two years, I'd say almost certainly. Discovering new technologies this year, a feat that has always been the exclusive domain of human ingenuity. This is the core belief driving the AI gold rush, the philosophy of scaling laws. The theory is that if you just make these models big enough, if you feed them enough of the world's data and throw an obscene amount of computing power at them, they won't just imitate human knowledge, they will begin to generate it. This is why Musk is building a literal gigafactory of compute, a $10 billion data center with over 100,000 of NVIDIA's most powerful chips. He's trying to brute force his way to AGI, and he's not the only one who thinks this can work. One of the most articulate defenders of this approach is Ilya Sutskever, the former chief scientist and co-founder of OpenAI. He has a compelling, almost philosophical explanation for how an AI that simply predicts the next word can achieve superhuman insight. So I challenge the claim that next token prediction cannot surpass human performance. It looks like on the surface it cannot. Mm -hmm. It looks on the surface if you just learn to imitate, to predict what people do, it means that you can only copy people. But the, here is a counter argument for why it might not be quite so if your neural net is, if your base neural net is smart enough. You just ask it like, what would a, what would a person with great insight and wisdom and capability do? Maybe such a person doesn't exist, but there's a pretty good chance that the neural net will be able to extrapolate how such a person could behave. Do you see what I mean? extrapolate how such a person would behave. That's the key. The theory is that a massive neural network, by learning from all of human history, culture, and science, isn't just memorizing facts, it's learning the underlying structure of intelligence itself. It's building a compressed, abstract model of the world, and from that model, it can reason about things it has never seen before, potentially even reaching conclusions no human ever could. It's a beautiful, elegant theory. It's the vision that has attracted hundreds of billions of dollars in investment. But what if it's all built on a house of cards? What if the very foundation of this approach is, to put it bluntly, bullshit? To answer that, we have to listen to the man who has been sounding the alarm for years, Yan LeClun. As the head of AI at Meta and one of the three godfathers of AI, his words carry immense weight. And he believes anyone who thinks scaling LLMs is the only answer is making a colossal mistake. We are not going to get to human level AI by just scaling up LLMs. This is just not going to happen, okay? That's your perspective. There's no way, okay? Absolutely no way. Um, and, and whatever you can hear from some of my uh, more adventurous colleagues, uh, <laughs> it's not going to happen within the next two years. There's absolutely no way in hell to, you know, pardon my French, um, the, you know, the idea that we're, we're going to have, you know, a country of genius in a data center, that's complete BS, right? There's absolutely no way. What we're going to have maybe is systems that are trained on sufficiently large amounts of data that any question that any reasonable person may ask will, will find an answer through those systems. And it would feel like you have, you know, a PhD sitting next to you, but it's not a PhD you have next to you. It's, uh, you know, a, a system with uh, a gigantic uh, memory and retrieval ability, not not a system that can invent uh, solutions to, uh, to new problems. Um, uh, however, there are ideas about how to uh, go forward and have systems that are capable of doing what, what every intelligent animal and, and human are capable of doing and that uh, current AI systems are not capable of doing. And I'm, I'm talking about understanding the physical world, um, having persistent memory, and being able to reason and plan. Those are the four characteristics that, that, you know, need to be there. Understanding the physical world. This is the heart of LeCun's critique, and it's a powerful one. A baby learns more about physics, about cause and effect, in its first few months of life than an LLM learns from reading every book ever written. An LLM doesn't know that if you let go of a ball, it will fall due to gravity. It only knows that from a statistical analysis of trillions of words that the word fall very often follows the phrase, let go of a ball. This isn't just a philosophical debate, it points to a potentially fatal flaw. 
and LeCun's argument is now being backed up by research from one of the most unexpected places, Apple. Just this year, researchers at Apple published a bombshell paper titled The Illusion of Thinking. They tested leading AI models on a series of logic puzzles that became exponentially more complex. At low complexity, the AI models were brilliant. But as the problems got harder, something alarming happened. The models didn't just get more answers wrong, their performance experienced what the paper calls a complete collapse. They stopped even trying to reason and instead started hunting for shortcuts or giving up entirely. The paper's conclusion is damning. These models don't think, they simulate thinking. This reveals the central paradox of our time. We have models like Grok 4 easing PhD level exams while the same underlying architecture completely breaks down on a logic puzzle a child could solve. One is a demonstration of incredible knowledge retrieval, the other exposes a profound lack of true reasoning. So, where does that leave us in the quest to answer our central question? The reality is, both sides have a point. Elon Musk is right that the raw power of scaled-up models are producing capabilities that are astonishing and unpredictable. The ability to discover new technologies might very well be an emergent property of these massive systems, just like Ilya Setskever suggests. We've seen it in AI's ability to design novel proteins and master complex games. At the same time, Yan LeCun and the Apple researchers have exposed a fundamental crack in the foundation. Without a true, grounded understanding of cause and effect, what LeCun calls a world model, these systems may always be brittle, unreliable, and ultimately, not truly intelligent. They might be the most powerful tools ever created, but they will remain just that. Tools, not thinkers. The next 18 months will be the ultimate test. The industry is betting a trillion dollars that scaling is the path. We will see the launch of AI systems with capabilities that dwarf what we have today, all attempting to fulfill Elon Musk's aggressive timeline. But as they do, we must keep asking the hard question posed by the skeptics. Are we building a true intelligence, or are we just getting better and better at building a more convincing parrot? The answer will define not just the future of technology, but the future of humanity itself. So, now that you've seen the evidence, what do you think? Is the path to AGI brute force scaling, or does it require a completely new architecture, a new way of thinking about thinking? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. If this deep dive gave you a new perspective on the AI race, consider liking this video and subscribing for more investigations into the technology that is shaping our world. Thanks for watching.